the Inklings were the sort of club, informal club, of people of like mind. Many scholars feel that J.R.R. Tolkien would never have completed The Lord of the Rings without the encouragement of the legendary Inklings, the Oxford Literary Club that met nearly every Tuesday and Thursday from the mid-1930s until 1954. The Inklings were the sort of club, informal club, of people of like mind. Club members were male, Christian, and shared traditional views of literature, despite the prevailing modernism at Oxford. There was never a, an official cast list for the Inklings, but I, I would have said it was basically uh, the friends of C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis, Charles Williams, uh, Tolkien himself, and several others. Members came and went over the years, but at its core were Tolkien and Lewis, who met as young professors in 1926. I think they were brought together by a love of certain mythologies. And when they ran out of reading the Icelandic mythologies, they created their own. In the long-standing tradition of academic clubs at Oxford, Tolkien and Lewis formed the Inklings to nurture their writing. They read their work to each other, so you had to have something to, to show. It was a show and tell group. Tuesday mornings, the Inklings would convene over a pint at the Eagle and Child pub, which everyone called the Bird and Baby. Tuesday mornings, it would probably be kind of lunchtime, and it's a case of uh, dropping in for a drink and maybe, uh, you know, half an hour or an hour of conversation, and then, you know, going off to whatever your, your, your business is. Thursday evenings, the group held lively discussions in Lewis's sitting room at Magdalen College. Tolkien even said if somebody walked by the room on Thursday evenings, they would think that they were all fighting because it was very pugnacious and boisterous. Tolkien, for instance, might well read a chapter of, uh, of Lord of the Rings and uh, ask for comments and uh, see what people thought about it. And uh, one of the things that, that this does is that if you know you've got an audience uh, waiting for you or liable to say, well, you know, have you got anything for us? you carry on writing. The camaraderie of the group was also very important to Tolkien. He said himself that uh, by um, 1918, uh, all but one of his close friends uh, were dead. So that really his next uh, circle uh, was the Inklings. Lewis really was the reservoir of energy for the group. He often did a lot of the reading. He made sure the conversation went along certain lines. They were not to talk about their personal lives. He frowned on that, and he would cut that off. He was, a, you know, an, I'd say an enormously productive person. C.S. Lewis was a prolific and disciplined writer. Among the many works he developed with the Inklings was his classic fantasy series, The Chronicles of Narnia. Tolkien hated the Narnia stories. He thought it lacked mythological depth. So there was kind of a professional jealousy going on there that Tolkien just struggled, struggled to get his work to a point at which he was satisfied with it, where Lewis would just write things in first draft and hand them to a publisher. In 1939, Lewis invited writer and lecturer Charles Williams to join the Inklings. To Tolkien's dismay, Lewis's attention suddenly shifted to this engaging new member of the group. Charles Williams was another very eccentric, very charismatic figure. Uh, came out of a different world. He didn't come through the academic uh, private school world of uh, Tolkien and Lewis. Meetings sometimes lasted until after midnight as the Inklings grappled with the common themes of their work. One of the uh, connections actually is uh, the idea of evil. 
and where it comes from. Uh, Lewis, for instance, is famous for the screw tape letters, which is actually a set of letters written by a senior devil to a junior devil, telling him how to go about tempting people. Williams uh, really wrote, uh, I think we would call them occult thrillers, which often have in them, uh, you know, very marked uh, images of the wickedest person in the world. And of course, Tolkien is also, I think, very interested in, uh, in the genesis of evil. Tolkien, of course, stating that, the, that nothing is evil in the beginning, but you can make yourself evil. Another common thread among the Inklings' writings was the concept of wraiths. Tolkien actually, I think it's probably his idea, you know, the ring wraiths, but Lewis uh, as often picked it up and actually has a very uh, striking image of what he thinks a wraith is like in his book, um, That Hideous Strength. And uh, uh, Williams too has uh, images as it were of, uh, well, uh, ghostly creatures, people who've died but haven't realized they've died yet. Uh, which again have this kind of wraith-like uh, uh, atmosphere about them. Lewis in, in The Four Loves talks about friendship. You know, two friends are great, but three is even better, and four just adds to the atmosphere, and true friends don't mind how many people are there, but that was not the truth. I think that Tolkien really resented uh, the inclusion of Williams because the Tuesday mornings especially were a special time for Tolkien and Lewis together. Despite the tension, the Inklings met until 1954, when Lewis moved from Oxford to Cambridge. The Tolkien-Lewis friendship was further strained in 1957, when Lewis, a confirmed bachelor, suddenly married American divorcee Joy Davidman, mother of two young boys, ex-communist, and a recent convert from Judaism to Christianity. He announced it in the newspapers on Christmas Eve, and I think that uh, friends were, were, were very hurt by that. Although Tolkien and Lewis managed occasional visits, the ongoing conversation was over. I am sure that Tolkien would never have finished The Lord of the Rings without Lewis continually encouraging him and urging him on and talking to him and, and, and generally sort of uh, smoothing the way for him. The Eagle and Child is still a popular Oxford watering hole. And while much has changed since the Inklings gathered there, the ideas and words of Tolkien, Lewis, and Williams still echo off the walls.